Beloved people of God, good morning. Good morning. Grace and peace to you from God our Creator and the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a joy to welcome you to Parkwood on this beautiful Sunday morning. Um, and happy Palm Sunday. This is the beginnings in many way of Holy Week um, as we work our way towards the cross and the empty tomb. As we gather, knowing that, a few reminders for us. Um, the first is that we have two extra services this week. One is Monday Thursday, which is Thursday evening, and that will be held here in the sanctuary. Um, and, oh, look at that, light. Um, thank you. Um, so Monday Thursday will be held here in the sanctuary. We will start with a light soup supper. We'll have broccoli cheddar and chicken noodle soup. Um, so hopefully that entices you to, to come out. We will also have a short service project. We'll put together hygiene kits for church world service, um, followed by a worship service. Um, and we're sharing that service and Good Friday with Bread of Life Lutheran Church. So both of those services will be led both by myself and Pastor Kate from Bread of Life. Um, and Thursday, especially, I want to note, um, is meant to be a gift from us pastors to you. There have been many folks who've reached out asking if we need help with anything, um, but we invite you really to just come and enjoy this time, um, and time together around the table, time to get to know our friends from Bread of Life, um, and time to worship together. Good Friday will be held at Bread of Life, which is just over on the corner of Baldwin and 36th. Um, and that is going to be a more kind of traditional Good Friday service with readings and songs. Um, so we encourage you to come out for that. One note, the one piece of help we will ask is if you can stay after worship today and help us rearrange the sanctuary, please do. Um, we are going to be putting up tables so we can eat together um, and disassembling most of the chairs. So if you can stick around for that, please do. I also want to note that Kathy Vanderbelli, our administrative assistant, is out of the office this week. She is on vacation, which means that my office hours, because it's Holy Week, will be very sporadic. So I cannot guarantee that I will be in the office during our normal office hours, which means that if you need to get a hold of me or the church for any reason, your best bet is to call my cell phone number. If you do not have that number, it starts with 815. If you don't have that number, there are some business cards on that table um, where the hand sanitizer is in the back. Um, so please pick up one of those and if you need to get a hold of us for any reason, my cell phone is the best way to do that. I also know we have a moment for mission this morning from Dennis. Good morning. If you can't hear me, raise your hand. <laughs> I'll speak louder then. Thank you. This is in regards to the one great hour of sharing. There's a bulletin insert. It explains things much better than I could. I want to encourage you to read it. The three Parts of the one great hour of sharing are hunger, disaster, and development. This year, the mission committee is going to ask you to dig a little deeper for your donation. The need is great. If you're going to consider donating a dollar, dig a little deeper. Make it two. If you're going to consider donating five, dig a little deeper. Make it six. If you're going to make a $20 donation, 
dig a little deeper and make it 25, please. I would like you to take a good look at the person experiencing disaster on the front of this insert. And after you do, please dig a little deeper. Thanks, Becca. Thanks, Dennis. Do we have any other announcements, reminders this morning? <clears throat> All right. With all of that said, let us worship God together. Will you all please join me in the call to worship? Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Please join me, seated and singing, hymn 196, All Glory, Laud, and Honor. <laughs> Thank you. 
deny his presence in our lives and in our hearts. Forgive us and heal us, we pray. Help us to put our faith not in the powers of this world, but only in the Prince of Peace. It is the Lord who helps us, so who will declare us guilty? Because of the grace we have received, we have nothing to fear. Forgiven and free, let us share the peace of Christ with all we meet. Hallelujah. Amen. Eternal God, quiet within us all the voices clamoring for our attention, that by the power of your Holy Spirit we may be formed all the more into your image. Amen. The first scripture reading is from Joshua chapter 4, verses 1 through 8. Twelve stones set up at Gilgal. When the entire nation had finished crossing over the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, Select twelve men from the people, one from each tribe, and command them, Take twelve stones from here out of the middle of the Jordan, from the place <clears throat> where the priest's feet stood. Carry them over with you, and lay them down in the place where you camp tonight. Then Joshua summoned the twelve men from the Israelites, whom he had appointed, one from each tribe. Joshua said to them, 
Pass on before the ark of the Lord your God into the middle of the Jordan, and each of you take up a stone on his shoulder, one for each of the tribes of the Israelites, so that this may be a sign among you. When your children ask in time to come, what do these stones mean to you? Then you shall tell them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off in front of the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. When it crossed over the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off, so that these stones shall be to the Israelites a memorial forever. The Israelites did as Joshua commanded. They took up the twelve stones out of the middle of the Jordan, according to the number of the tribes of the Israelites. As the Lord told Joshua, carried them over with them to the place where they're camped, and laid them down there. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today we come to the end of our Ordinary Miracles series as we move into Holy Week and Easter. You might think that today's everyday object would be palm branches or maybe tree branches, because today is Palm Sunday. Unfortunately, palms are not quite an everyday object for us here in Michigan. Um, and if you listen closely to these words from Luke, you will see why we're going to think about stones instead. Our second reading is from Luke chapter 19, verses 28 through 40. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethphage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They said, The Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. So before we get to Jesus and his triumphal entry into Jerusalem, let's talk about Joshua and the story that Dick read for us. So after their escape from Egypt and 40 years of wandering in the desert, the Israelites are finally ready to enter the Promised Land. They're about to cross the Jordan River, which would form the eastern border of their territory, following Joshua, Moses' successor, and the Ark of the Covenant, the seat of God's throne here on earth. When they have all crossed the river, walking on dry ground, God has one last direction to give them. Pick up twelve stones. One elder from each tribe is to go into the Jordan and take a stone from the place where the Ark of the Covenant stood, and take it with them to the place they camped that night. Then they pile them up as a memorial for generation after generation, so that in a hundred years, when their curious seven-year-old great-great-grandchild asks what the weird pile of rocks is, someone can say, this is a monument to our liberation, a testament to all that God has done for us. It's not a monument to their own victories, because if you read the whole story, they haven't really had any wins yet. But it is a physical reminder in their midst of God's presence and God's care for them. 
This story, the story of the 12 stones, is the basis for one of my favorite hymn verses of all time, from Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. It goes like this. Here I raise mine Ebenezer, hither by thy help I've come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Fun fact. I didn't find out what an Ebenezer was, despite singing this hymn hundreds of times, until I was in seminary and taking Hebrew classes. We learned the word ezer first, which means help. In the Old Testament, it almost exclusively refers to God's miraculous help in dire circumstances. A few weeks later, we learned the word for stone or brick. Evan. And something clicked in my brain in that moment. Evan and Ezer combined to form the word Ebenezer, which means stones of help. In several places in the Old Testament, the people of God would pile up stones as reminders of God's miraculous intervention, God's saving help, God's showing up. In a society with few people who could read or write, this was a nearly universally recognized way to proclaim for generations that something amazing happened in this place. Knowing this, we can see Jesus' dramatic entrance to Jerusalem and his comments to the religious leaders in a new light. No matter which gospel you find it in, Jesus' last trip into Jerusalem before his death is described as a parody of a military victory parade. Seriously, this is like the ancient version of a Saturday Night Live skit. They're making fun of the emperor, the governor, the religious leaders, and every other person with power. Instead of a war horse, Jesus rides into town on a donkey. A brand new colt, even, never ridden, and definitely not trotting down those streets with dignity and grace. Instead of rose petals and expensive carpets, random people spread their cloaks and coats on the road. Instead of imperial heralds describing the many ways this person won violent victories over their enemies, you have a slightly unruly group of disciples shouting about all of the ways Jesus has healed, cast out demons, taught nonviolence and compassion, and even raised the dead. The leaders in the crowd are not impressed, and they try to get him, to get them, to calm down, to make them stop. They don't want any negative attention from the Romans in particular. But Jesus says, listen, if I make them be quiet, the stones themselves will start shouting. The stones on the banks of the Jordan proclaimed God's deeds of power. And so did these living stones, the disciples. Turns out if you silence one, the other one will shout. What we learn here is that God's compassion and love will always find a way to make itself known. It cannot be contained or downplayed or ignored or covered up. Somehow, some way, God's love and power will be proclaimed. We keep telling these same stories of scripture year after year, over and over again, because they not only tell us about what Jesus did thousands of years ago, but because they help us notice God's deeds of power in our own lives. These stories, alongside our own experiences, are our stones of help, standing as monuments to God's work in our world. One of the things I appreciate most about the Bible is its brutal honesty. If you read the whole thing, you will see a lot of failure, pain, violence, sin, family dysfunction. 
alongside all of the beauty, grace, miracles, and signs of God's love. And from the early days, when these stories were passed from generation to generation via memorization and recitation, and perhaps even performance, theater style, from those to the first manuscripts written to the 597 versions of the Bible we have today, there were millions of chances to edit these stories, to make them more palatable, to make God's people look better, less helpless, less prone to gratuitous violence, more loving as parents, more just as rulers, more faithful as people. But they didn't. What we have in Scripture is not so much an instruction manual, because there are plenty of things that are in the Bible that you should not do. What we have instead is a family scrapbook. Rascals, outcasts, refugees, bad eggs, and all. And still, always, no matter how bad things get, let me tell you, they get bad, God keeps showing up. So it is in our own lives, too. Through doubts, trials, grief, messy seasons, and long spiritual winters, God keeps showing up. If you were to walk through your entire life one more time, where would you pile up stones? In the backyard of your first home? At the doors to the place where you graduated? In the restaurant where you met your spouse? In the exact spot where you realized your kids, despite all the hardships of parenthood, really were going to turn out fine. In the place where you go to rest and refresh your soul. In the moment when you realized you really had survived that thing you thought would bring your world crashing to a halt. Where would you put a rock down and say, surely God was in this place? One of the things we've been talking about quite a bit in the Lenten book groups these past couple months is the practice of gratitude. Not just feeling it, but expressing it. The practice of saying out loud, thank you, and thanks be to God, and you are a blessing, and I'm so grateful for this moment. We don't have to pile up rocks literally every time we're feeling grateful. But there is something to the idea of speaking our thanksgiving, praising God together, proclaiming God's goodness even and especially when things are hard. Someone wise once said that grief, when shared with others, is divided and the burden lessened, but joy shared with others is multiplied. Now, I know we're Presbyterians, so we're not likely to be overly exuberant about it. (laughs) But, lest the rocks come alive and start praising God on our behalf, maybe we can be a little bit louder about all of the ways and times and places that we have come to know God's presence and care for us. Alleluia. Amen.
God has given us his only child, Jesus Christ, as the way of our salvation. Let us then live generously as God has given generously to us as we pray together. Holy One, we give you thanks for the great deeds of salvation that you have done and continue to do. Bless these offerings of thanksgiving that they may further your kingdom in this world. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Thanksgiving. Um, Bonham Beckley finally talked to her this week, and she is um, at Beechwood recovering from her knee replacement, doing really well, already started BT, um, rare to go. So thanks be to God for that. David. To be cel celebrating first African-American woman has completed and succeeded in being confirmed as a Supreme Court Justice. Amen. Amen. Um, so for those in the back, um, Thanksgiving for Justice, newly confirmed Justice, Katanji Brown Jackson, um, and her historic appointment to the Supreme Court. Chris mentioned in choir practice last Thursday that his friend Mike is not doing well in his battle with cancer. Mm -hmm. And that's for prayers. And I, I thought I'd extend that today. Absolutely. Um, thank you. So Chris Mason, our music director, had mentioned a few weeks ago that a friend of his was starting treatment for cancer. Um, and his friend Mike apparently is not doing very well. So we will pray for Mike and for Chris. Linda. Continue prayers for the Ukraine. Absolutely. <clears throat> Let's go to God in prayer together. God of love, we give you thanks and praise for all of the ways that you have shown up for us. We praise you for the gift of this sunny day, for the gift of warmth, for the gift of this community. We lift up in prayer all those who are sick, who are recovering, who are anticipating surgeries. Um, God, we Lift up Mike as he battles cancer. We pray that you would be with him, that you would grant him healing, that you would grant him strength and wisdom in the meanwhile. We give you thanks for Bana, that she is recovering well, um, and we pray that she would respond well to physical therapy, um, and that she would be back with us soon enough. We praise you too for all of the ways that we see life and justice taking hold. We give you thanks for Justice Katanji Brown Jackson. We pray that she would um, do her her job well with wisdom and justice. Um, and we pray that for all of our leaders as they make decisions on our behalf. <clears throat> we lift up to the continued violence and war and atrocities in Ukraine. 
and we pray that you would grant peace to that nation. We pray that you would plant peace in the hearts of all those who are committing violence against innocents. We pray for wisdom for all those who are leading. We pray for safety for all those who are on the ground. Um, and we pray that you would bring this situation quickly to an end. And we pray that you would help us to share with you and with one another our joys and our burdens. And we lift all of these things to you, trusting in your love. And now we join our hearts and our voices together in the prayer that you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom.
our souls, to know and be known, of our minds, to learn and to teach, and our strength, to do justice in the soul. As you go, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his face to you and give you peace. Amen.